So I've got a million dollars in debt. What now? Please note the full disclaimer here, which is also located in the about section of my YouTube channel. And we're gonna talk about good debt and bad debt. Credit card debt, when you use it responsibly, it's good and it helps you build up credit. However, if you let your balance carry over, we all know what kind of exorbitant rates the credit card companies charge. Some of them have an introductory rate, but they quickly go up after a certain period of time to the standard credit card rate, which in Ontario, Canada, you're looking at between 18 to 20% interest rate. So you wanna make sure you pay that down as quickly as possible and not use it for the wrong types of purchases. Next, we have your personal line of credit. So the rates on that are uh, a lot better than credit card. You're looking at between eight to 10%. Again, depends on the institution, your credit, different offers that are going on. And that is generally a better type of debt than credit card debt. But again, not necessarily the greatest as that is a still a pretty hefty interest rate. Now, when you're using credit card debt and personal line of credit at these types of rates on things such as cars, trips, going on a shopping spree, things that either the money is just gone, okay, you've got that new toy and then that's it, or things like a car, which some people call an asset, but really is it, it's a depreciating asset, something that loses value as soon as you drive it off the lot. So really in my books, unless it's something that's going to appreciate in value, this is not the type of debt you want to get deep into as it can get you into a lot of trouble. Now, looking over on to getting a mortgage, for example, on an investment or rental property, the interest rate on there is much more reasonable because you've got a true asset that is making you money, appreciating over time, and the banks have that as collateral. So therefore, they can give you, it's less risky for them, basically, so they can give you uh, a much better rate. Next thing we've got is something called a HELOC, Home Equity Line of Credit. And if you get a Home Equity Line of Credit against your personal residence, you can then use those funds to help purchase a rental property when you're putting it into an appreciating asset, such as a rental property, then you can see how it's going to be a great investment over the long term, as I'll show you in the next few screens. So back to the original question, is a million dollars worth of debt a bad thing? As we've discussed, if you've got that one million into assets that are appreciating, then it could be a very good thing. If you've got that million dollars into liabilities, things that drain your money or things that depreciate, then it may not be such a good thing. Let's dive into some concrete examples with the numbers. If you've got a, a million dollars in debt across, for example, a few rental properties that are appreciating over time, that the mortgage is slowly being paid down on, that perhaps you're making some positive cash flow on, then it could be a great thing. Let's look at this example here. We've got condo number one. It's got a current market value of $450,000. Maybe you purchased it a few years ago or you put down a certain amount of money on it, 20%, and it's slowly been paid down over time. Now your mortgage is 270,000. So what's the equity that you have in there? 180,000. And then let's say you've bought a second condo with a market value of 485,000. Let's say the mortgage on that is 230,000. What's your equity? How much have you built up in that? You've got $255,000 worth of equity here. Now, let's say a little bit more recently, 
you've purchased a condo of $650,000 market value at this time, and you've got a considerable mortgage on that half a million dollars. But again, you've got something that's an asset that's growing over time, unlike a car and other things that actually go down in value over time. So in this case, we've got 150,000 worth of equity. So let's just say, for example, right now, this was my situation. And I said, okay, I, I need the money I want out for whatever reason. And I sell all three of these at market value. And I'd have 585,000. Now, of course, there's you know, some, some realtor commissions to sell it. There's some closing costs, lawyers fees. But even if you subtract all of that, you still probably end up with about a half a million dollars. Even if you only did one condo, let's take the example of something, you know, there's a, a, a deal out there for a condo, 450,000 of the market value. You've put 20% down as most banks and lenders want you to put 20% down on an investment property and they lend you the rest. So in this case, the balance is 360,000. So over time, this $360,000 mortgage is getting paid down with the help of the rent that you're collecting from your tenant. Then at the same time, we've got appreciation happening, assuming 5% per year. At the end of 20 years, you're looking at 1.2 million bucks. That is absolutely fantastic. After 20 years, the mortgage goes down to about $154,000. And now you've got over $1 million to retire with, with all this extra money. That buys you a lot of freedom. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Hopefully you got some value out of this. Please hit that thumbs up and subscribe as we've got a lot more exciting content coming your way, including some really cool interviews with some experts. Bye for now.